How you going internet? Today we've got for you a 1981 Ironhead Sportster. We've done a fair few little bits and pieces on this bike, a lot of finishing work, and as with a lot of stuff, the last 20% of getting that job finished is often the hardest, which is where we've come in and finished this one off. We're about to take you through another quick fix episode here in the Purpose Built Motor Garage. Now starting off on the tail end of this bike, we were tasked with mounting a new seat that the customer supplied here in this vintage leather, a nice little bit that's, uh, we've also had to build like a spring setup for it. We had to get some aftermarket springs, make a few brackets and mount that onto the hard tailed frame here. We've also built this sissy bar and hung some indicators off it. While this thing is old, it wasn't pre-ADR, so we had to make sure we had all the lighting set up on it, so this thing was street legal. So we've used some 12 mil solid bar here, uh, some fabrication bungs out of one of our fab kits uh, that you can buy through the website, nice little plug, and our indicators and orbit brake lights. So we've sort of just gone with a really simple style because the handlebars and stuff on the front of this bike aren't that high and the front end's been lowered quite significantly. We didn't go full height on the sissy bar, so we've sort of done a, a half or two thirds height sissy bar on here. Client request was just make it simple and clean, so that's what we've done. Had that powder coated black, and I've also had to build in a little cable cover box here. So we've got a fair few lights on the rear end here. I didn't want to see a massive cables. So we've run these into a little cover here that just bolts on with your, uh, with your number plate, and that hides a few of the connections with the cables running away on the brake side of the hardtail to underneath the motor to be connected. Moving towards the front of the bike here, We've done uh, a few aesthetic upgrades on the front. The previous owner or builder uh, had worked in a hidden throttle mechanism in here that's uh, hidden inside the bars with the cable running internally. That actually broke off when we went to test ride it, so we had to crack that open and fix that up. We've also fitted our three button switch here, so you've got your high and low beam control and left and right indicators on the left hand side. Also used one of our scrambler mirrors to hang underneath the bar here. Again, something that we did to sort of edge this bike to being street legal. So we've hung that up there nice and neat. Because we're not running a front brake on this bike either, the rest of the handlebars stayed nice and clean. We've also mounted some indicators on the front. So we had some threaded holes on the, uh, the springer here that we've built some mounts off to hang our hollow tip LED indicators. This grilled four and a half inch headlight was already fitted up. So we've just left that there. We've got an aftermarket set of wheels on this bike. It's running a 23 inch front wheel, which is a little bit odd on this style bike. But like I said before, it's a bit of a mixed bag. You've got a lot of quite old school styling and paint and stuff on this bike, but then you've got a few modern touches like the, uh, the oversized wheel, which you don't really see on many of these old choppers. It's, uh, you know, probably wouldn't be my first choice, but as we've had this bike and worked on it a little bit more, it's sort of grown on me uh, time again. And if I was building this bike, I'd probably just run like a nice skinny 21 on the front here, but horses for courses, the owner seems to really love this bike. So it rides quite nice as well, although that front end gets a little bit heavy at slow speeds. Another big task on our list was to rebuild the exhaust. This actually came as a last minute thing. I was in contact with Trent, the owner of the bike, um, had a chat with him and he was about to come down and pick it up and I sort of said to him in the future it'd probably be worthwhile thinking about uh, fabricating a nice old school exhaust for this bike. This is what was on there. It was really well fabricated and a nicely built exhaust but it doesn't really matter how nice you would build this thing. It didn't really fit on the bike having like these pie cut raw welded street sweeper style pipes on a bike this, uh, this old. Just not really of the era of, of, of the style I think so. What we've done here is fabricate a set of new headers, um, a two into one setup, and then used a new old spares cocktail shaker that we've got from Luke at Brit Cycles. He's a local British parts dealer here on the Gold Coast. And it's nice to be able to shop and buy things super local because I ordered it and had it within a day or two. That enabled us to get this last job that was added right at the end, finished nice and quickly. And then this bike will be out of here in the next couple of days. So I'll run you through a few of the smaller jobs that we've done on this thing. Uh, when the bike came in, obviously no front brake. The rear brake linkage setup was a bit weird. So this was fabricated to run over the peg and you couldn't get full leverage out of the brake because it hit onto the peg mount here. So what we've done is change this around and refabricate a brake lever 
to go on the underside of the exhaust so you get that full operation now and it's also a bit easy to access. Beforehand, the brake pedal was sat way behind the, uh, the foot peg which made it a bit of a pain in the ass to stomp on. So we fixed that up, the brakes are working really well now and it's a lot easier to access when you're on the run. The catalyst of why this bike came to us was because uh, Trent had bought it, ridden it for a little while and then it stopped, it wouldn't go anymore, there was something wrong with the electric. So we've dug around, uh, found a fair few things that were wrong with the wiring. So on these old bikes, especially if you don't update the regulator, you should never run lithium batteries on them because the regulators send voltage spikes and over voltage because they don't really do their job as well as they should after 30 or 40 or 50 years. So they overcharge your lithium batteries and because they're so small and compact, they're a lot more sensitive to overcharging and it'll just blow your battery up. So that was on the verge of happening. We actually took out the lithium battery and the power pack inside the case was all swollen. So I was about to give in. And I think that had caused a few issues with the regulator as well, because once we started the bike up, we found that the cycle electric generator was charging fine. It's got a two brush generator on it. It was, you know, putting out more than enough AC, but that charge wasn't getting through the regulator into your battery. So we've sourced a cycle electric three wire regulator rectifier, installed that, um, and then after repolarizing the generator, everything worked uh, and it's charging that battery fine. We've also replaced the battery with a standard lead acid and had to modify that little battery box on the back. Another little tidbit that I almost forgot. So because of the sprung seat, uh, we haven't really got uh, any way to hide our electronics. So this bike's running off one of our black box modules, which gives you your sort of like headlight high low operation from our push buttons. We've got uh, Donnie to fabricate up this little cover, sort of reminiscent of a, of a later model horn cover. They mount off the side, so there's an engine bracket here that we've built off of, uh, and this cover plate actually sits over another backing plate, and we've mounted our black box and a terminal strip in here. So this thing houses all of your um, sort of your lighting and electrical connections, other than the charging and the ignition circuit. So once we'd finished all of our wiring work and everything else that had to be done on it, we had to tickle with the carb a little bit because it was running a little rich, but the engine fired up really quickly. It actually starts so, so nice uh, and it runs super quiet too. So uh, the owner was told when he purchased it that the engine had been recently rebuilt and you know, if the sound of this thing is anything to go by, he's done a pretty good job on it because there's no noise in the top or bottom end. It's, it runs super quiet. All you can hear is those two pots pumping out the exhaust. I'll start this thing up for you in a second so you can hear it running and I've got to get out on a test ride before Trent comes and picks it up. So thanks for watching another episode of the Purpose Built Moto Quick Fix. Make sure you hit us with a comment below and like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you soon on the next one. Generally, this is the part where your favourite YouTuber is going to ask you to subscribe to their Patreon. Luckily for you, we're not YouTubers. We're bike builders and parts makers. So if you like the content we create and the bikes we build, or you hate both of those things and just want to grab some gear for your next project, make sure you show your support, jump on our online store and give your bike that purpose-built moto touch. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.